In this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you how to paint white power armour and all the other things you need to know to paint white scars. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to paint a white scar. I'll put the brushes and paints I use in this tutorial in the description below as well as putting them on the screen when I use them. And if you enjoy my content please give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. And if you want to help support what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon which I'll link in the description. I really appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to growing the channel and it allows me to keep improving the content I create for you. And I massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people as well. When I built this miniature I built it in sub assemblies. This makes painting so much easier and allows me to get to the details you wouldn't be able to if the miniature was fully assembled. You can check out my getting miniatures ready for painting tutorial to learn how I do it. I've also undercoated my white scar using grey sear spray. You could use white scar, it's up to you. Both will make painting the white armour easy. I just had some grey sear left over from my last tutorial. So along with yellow, white is seen to be one of those difficult colours to paint. But hopefully by the end of this tutorial, I would have been able to show you how easy it can actually be. Through this tutorial I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get your white scar painted and to make it easier to follow along with I'll divide this tutorial up into different chapters. In this first section of the tutorial we're going to go straight into painting the white power armour and how to shade and highlight white. The first thing we want to do is to get our base colour down for the power armour and for white I always like to use Corax white. So whenever you're painting there are some things I always make sure I do to get a nice solid colour for the area I'm painting. First of all it's a good idea to thin your paints and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. You then want to keep your brush moving and try not to go over any area you've already painted to prevent any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And because we thinned our paint you'll see that it hasn't covered the miniature very well. So once your first layer is dry we can now move on to getting another layer painted using the same process. Painting in multiple thin layers helps us get a strong smooth colour without losing any detail. Just remember to let each layer dry before repeating the process of painting a layer until you're happy with it. You should never overlook how important it is to get your head around the basics are, even if you've been doing this hobby for many years like I have. I always make sure to follow these simple steps because I know the miniatures that I paint won't look as good otherwise. So now we have our base colour, I want to get all the armour joints painted using a bad and black. I'm doing this now because I don't want to risk being messy and ruining any work we may have already done. But if you are messy like me, we can just use some Corax white to neaten up our mistakes. When you finish doing that, we can work on creating definition and bringing out all the details on the power armour. The best way I find to get definition on power armour is with a recess shade which is going to have the details and armour panels stand out more. A recess shade allows us to create definition without affecting the main colour, unlike a wash which usually does. The colour I've been using to shade this white scar armour is Storm Vermin Fur and this is going to give us an overall warm tone as it's more of an earthy colour. Paint this directly into recesses and around detail. When that's done you're probably going to find it looks pretty messy but that's to be expected so don't worry. Just use some of the Corax white we used for the base colour to neaten things up. So Storm Vermin Fur was used to recess shade the white, but other colours can be used as well. For example Blue Horror can be used and this will give you a completely different tone once you've finished. So why not go away and try out different colours for yourself and see what you like. Now the recess shade is done and neatened up, I want to show you how to make your white power armour look more interesting. We can get into highlighting the armour once I've first shown you how to do some glazing. Let's thin down some Carrick Stone with an equal amount of Lamy Medium. Doing this makes the Carrick Stone more transparent. Pick areas on the armour where you think there will be some dirt and grime build up. And we want to make sure we paint an even thin coat and this is what we would call a glaze. Even though we use quite a thin mixture for our glaze, try not to think of this as a wash. We tend to use washes to create definition. A glaze however is mainly used to tint an existing colour or to create tonal variation in a more controlled way. You can build the glaze up if you want it to be stronger. Just make sure to do this slowly letting each layer completely dry before glazing again. If 
If you feel like you've overdone it, you can do the reverse and create Corax white glaze, helping to soften the Carrick stone glaze we just did. The glaze has done a great job of making our white power armour look more interesting and weathered, so now it's time to paint a highlight. And because we're going to be doing quite a lot of this throughout the rest of the tutorial, I want to go into some detail showing you how I do it and what works for me. Whenever I'm highlighting, I like to keep a brush separate so I know I have a nice point to it when I come to use it. And when thinning your paint for highlighting, I find I don't use as much water as I normally would when layering, as we won't be applying multiple layers. I then remove some of the paint on some kitchen paper, which is going to help us keep control of our paint and prevent thick blobby lines. The most common highlight you'll see and the highlight that is mostly used is the edge highlight. So let's start by highlighting all the white details and armour panels using some white scar. And to make painting this highlight easier, you can use the edge of your brush and run it along the edges to paint the highlights. Because it's white we can get away with just an edge highlight, but if you want to show off you can paint some little chips and scratches in the armour. For this I would use storm vermin fur and I find having almost no paint on my brush makes this easier. Make sure to paint some along the edges as well. So it turns out that painting white armour isn't so tough. And now you know all the steps you can go away and apply them to all your white scars. Let's finish this section by highlighting the armour joints we painted earlier so we don't forget about them. First paint a line on each ridge to highlight them using Eschen Grey. We then want to use Dawnstone to help emphasise the curve by painting a smaller line along the Eschen Grey we already painted. With the armour all finished, let's move on to painting all the other details on our white scar. Now the power armour is done, let's work on getting all the metals painted on our white scar. Let's get all the silver details painted first using iron hand steel for the base colour. Next use some Norn oil to create some definition. And finish these silver details with a Stormhouse Silver highlight. If you have any gold details to paint, start with some Retributor armour. Then apply some Agrax Earthshade to the gold. For the highlights we can use Liberator Gold. All the metals are done, but there's still plenty to get painted before we finished. I want to use this section of the tutorial to show you how to paint some of the other details that a white scar will have. One thing every white scar will have is the chest eagle decoration, and we can paint this using Mephiston Red first of all for the base colour. To bring out all the details, let's apply some Norn Oil, just enough to cover the area comfortably so we don't get too much pooling up in areas we don't want it to. When that's dry we can finish the chest eagle with an edge highlight of Wild Rider Red. For any weapon casings we want to paint them black using a bad and black. Next paint a chunky highlight which is just a thicker highlight along all the edges using Eschen Grey. Now paint an edge highlight using Dawnstone. Always take your time when painting. Remember, this is supposed to be a fun and relaxing hobby, and it takes time and practice to get good at something. To paint any belts and pouches your marine may have, start with some Rhinox Hide. Then paint a chunky highlight using Mournfang Brown. Carrick Stone is then used to paint the edge highlights. We can help the pouches and belts look like different materials to the armour, with some small scratches here and there, also using Carrick Stone. Try to focus along those highlights to give the impression of cracks you get in leather. White scars all have red trims on their shoulder pads. So to paint this you'll first need a base colour of Mephiston Red. Paint a chunky highlight using Evilson Scarlet and we can finish the trim using Wild Rider Red for an edge highlight. Let's finish up this tutorial showing you how to paint some of the red markings often seen on white scar armour to denote which company they belong to. Using Mephiston Red, I first mark out the points of the design with some dots, thinking about the space in between them. Now you're able to join the dots with some lines. And when you're happy with how the jagged design looks, you just need to fill in the rest of the design. You can make some adjustments and neaten up with some Corax White to make sure it looks how you want it to. And using the same steps, it's easy to paint other markings on your marines. When it comes to painting freehand on miniatures, it's okay that it's not perfect. People are still going to be really impressed that you did it, even if it is a little wonky.
The last thing to do is to paint the lenses on the white scar's helmet. First you just need to paint a small line of white scar in the center of each lens. Then apply some warp lightning contrast which is going to give us a kind of glowing light effect for the lenses. So all that's left to do now is to assemble all the parts and to do that I like to use some super glue so it doesn't affect the paint. I never get tired of painting Space Marines and I've really been enjoying painting all the different chapters on the channel. So let's see how this white scar turned out. A white scar is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint your own. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel including how to apply transfers and some of the other Space Marine chapters. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.